Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. It, online, it gets a lot of confusion between dairy and beef in that way. Um, you know, I've seen videos online of a beef cow. And, you know, if you take away a beef cow's calf, she will like bellow and be more aggressive. And that is bred into a beef cow. And then they'll be like, oh, this is a dairy farm. And you're like, that is not a dairy farm. That's actually a cattle ranch. And it's completely different. Yes, they're both cows, but they are such different animals. Dairy cows have just been bred for different things than cattle ranching. Um, for cattle that are going to be out on pasture. Um, my brother actually made the transition from dairy farming to cattle ranching a few years ago. And he laughs that like what he could put his dairy or his beef cows out on. If he put a dairy cow, like they wouldn't make it a week, you know, that it's just, they're not very hardy animals. And so one of the things that with that breeding is they are, do not always make the best mothers. Um, they will often have a calf, get up, leave the calf and that's it. Like they just don't have a lot of interest. Um, and so it's just a very different world. Um, the other cow cows in the pen will often like rush to the calf. And so the calf can end up getting hurt. And so there's a lot that goes into it. And it's just, it, they're very bred very differently. Um, and then obviously we take a lot of pride in caring for our calves. There's a ton that goes into raising our calves. Um, you know, they're the future of our herd. And so making sure that they have, you know, really healthy start is crucial for us on the dairy. Yeah. It's so interesting. Uh, We'll talk about ethics here in a little bit, but I think people have this idea that if you're going to raise cows either for dairy or for beef production, you think that the, the people running the ranches don't care about animals. And you start to talk to these ranchers and you learn like, no, they, they like the kids play with them. They have names like they really care for their animals, regardless of whether they're in, you know, the most ideal, quote unquote, grass fed, whatever situation that we think is really idyllic. And again, there's so much nuance to that. But but it, it seems to me across the board, everybody loves the animals and cares for them immensely. Yeah, we had Natalie's husband, Luke, on the podcast, and so she can jump in here, but he gave such a great quote that was just like, you get into this industry because you genuinely care for animals, like caring for animals at farmer ranchers core is like what they believe in. Yeah, I was going to say agriculture and farming is actually a really stressful industry. We carry one of the highest suicide rates. And so you're not entering into ranching and farming for like a cush lifestyle or, you know, some of the like a a high return on your investment, you know, some of these things you can enter into businesses for, um, you're really entering it because at your core, you love probably one being outside, you know, working with your hands, that kind of train of thought, but two, because you do love animals. Um, you know, again, my husband is a perfect example. He has wanted to be a rancher and work with cattle since he was little, you know, he's just one of those people that you ask them what they were when they're four year old and that is what they're doing today. And they are more than happy. Like that was what they were meant to do. And I I think, like I've already said, you're just, you're in this industry as ranching and farming because you care about animals. And so that's obviously the emotional component of it. You know, the, the, the person, you know, the personal side of it. Um, but there's also the business side of it. You know, that is our, our, our jobs, our ranches. Um, you know, how we provide for our families and how you hopefully are going to provide for the next generation too. Um, and our product is our animals, you know, that in the beef supply chain, we have to have good calves for someone to buy it from us to continue down the beef supply chain. Um, and if the, we don't have a good calf, um, we're not going to get, you know, as good of money for it, or people won't want to buy it. And then we're out of a job. And so there's both the emotional side of it and the business side of it. And both of them come down to really high standards when it comes to animal welfare, welfare, and really caring about your animals. On the yeah. milk side, you know, we get paid on our quality of our milk. Well, you're going to have higher quality milk based on the health of the cow, the diet of the cow, all of those things. So caring for her again, like on the profitability side, which people, I feel like an act or people don't always want to hear that side of it, but that's an important piece too. And um, yeah, if we don't have good milk quality, like the processors won't pick up our milk and we would again, like Natalie be like out of a job. Yeah. That's a really, really good point. Looking at it, not only from the emotional side, but also the business side. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I know this is super contextual. I don't assume that either one of you had have have had one day that's any like that like is not vastly different from the next. I'm sure every day has a lot of variety for you. But I wonder if each one of you could talk about like what what would be a typical day. Natalie, you mentioned working with your hands. What is a typical day like for the two of you? Yeah. So I like to explain ranching or break it down kind of in seasons, um, because I feel like that's the best way to grasp what I'm doing every day. Um, because you're right, the job does vary from day to day, but in that time frame, it's like maybe the overall same goal. So like calving season is a big one on our operation and, um, the, 
what is called what's like a first calf heifer. It's like the first time they're having a calf that is very, very hands-on. So you need to pay attention more. They need help, like just figuring it all out. Um, so depending on how many first calf heifers you have, you know, you're probably very attentive to that and focusing on that. Um, after that, uh, again, a little bit different than dairy, but we have that at pasture and we, you know, the, the mamas who have done this multiple times, they don't need a lot of help. And so calving season isn't as intense for us. It's really great. And kind of a beautiful thing. There's just calves and pears that are all running out and, you know, lush green grass. And so it's really great. Um, but then you kind of roll into summer where, you know, you're rotating pastures, we're fixing fence, we're doing things like that. We're checking on our cattle. Obviously that's a huge thing. Um, you know, they're spread out between different pastures. And so you'll do daily checks on them just for herd health and make sure nothing's wrong. And, um, you know, everything's going well within your herd. And so that's kind of, I'd say like the big goal and focus of, you know, those warmer summer months. Um, and then in fall, you know, we're moving from pasture to cornfields. And so that's a big part of it. And then when they're on cornfields, they do need supplemented with, you know, different things in their diet. Their cattle aren't different than humans where they need, you know, salt and different things for their, um, electrolytes for their body. And so you're managing all of that. And then you kind of roll into winter where, um, herd, our herd is no longer out at pasture. They're, they're closer to us, um, just because we deal with storms and weathers and things like that. And we're generally feeding with the tractor. And so, um, a lot of it is like season dependent, but it's all focused around basically making sure your calf is like eating or your herd, your, your cows and your calves, um, they're eating right every single day and they're remaining healthy every single day. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. What about you, Tara? Yeah, on the seasonality of Natalie's mind, it's completely opposite. Ours is all about routine, the exact same thing every single day at the same time. Dairy cows love a good routine. You could set your clock by the cows and their movements around our dairy. Um, so, uh, we start, obviously our cows are fed twice a day, every single day. Um, this is pretty common in all cattle, but we actually have a nutritionist that plans our cows diets. It's kind of Natalie said, just making sure they're getting exactly what they need and when they need it. Um, their pens are groomed every single day. So that's always going on. Um, I mentioned that the calves, you know, they are given bottles multiple times a day and then, um, access to, you know, grains and grasses and fresh water. And then as far as a milk cow, um, when the cows are milking, they go into the barn twice a day. Some dairies will do three times a day, uh, but most do two times a day. It just kind of depends on your system and what you have set up. Um, and the cows are milked for about eight minutes each time. So it's about just over 15 minutes a day that they spend actually being milked in the barn. And then the rest of the time they are out in their corrals, hopefully chewing their cut, <laughs> just relaxing. I mean, that's like the sign when you pull up to the dairy and you can see cows in the back of the pen, just chewing their cut. It's a sign of just like a really content herd, a uh, healthy herd that they're just hanging out, relaxing. Um, and then on the calving side, so Natalie mentioned like seasons, we do not have seasons. We calve almost the same every single day. We calve between 15 and 20 calves um, on our main dairy every single day, pretty much without fail. Um, you know, you have a spring flush sometimes where it's a little bit more um, in that, that perfect ideal weather where the calves want or the cows want to calve, but pretty consistent overall. Um, and then actually one similarity that Natalie mentioned, those first time heifers, we keep them actually they're as close to my house as you can get because um, you want to be able to keep an eye on them. They're really close to the barn so that, you know, employees as they're milking can keep an eye on them. Um, we try not to um, engage at all unless they need help. Um, and that goes the same for then second lactation, third lactation, those older cows. Typically, they don't need a ton of help. Uh, but it's just kind of one of the things you want to keep an eye on them. And then similar to weather, you know, if it's a really hot day or a really cold day, uh, we go out there and get the calf in as quickly as possible. If it's cold, a lot of times they'll get a warm bath, get dried off um, and get them under a heat lamp. Um, and so as many differences as there are between our two industries, again, the same thing is keeping them comfortable, well-fed and, and content in their, you know, whatever habitat environment they're in.